policy positions for the betterment of Canadians. I'm still waiting to see evidence of that last. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments. Questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member for Sandwich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And her Honourable Friend, Winnipeg North. I'd made this point earlier to the member for Lakeland, uh, Cold Lake, and I, 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 I for, rather, Fort McMurray, Cold Lake. I just want to reiterate it, not to be insulting or disparaging to my Liberal friends, but really and truly, the only thing that encouraged people to support the previous environmental assessment legislation that was brought forth as Bill C-69 was that the Premier of Alberta said it was the Anti-Pipeline Act. I couldn't vote for it because it just as easily could have been the Pro-Pipeline Act because it was a pile of discretion untethered from federal jurisdiction, which is why the Supreme Court in its reference case said that part of the bill that was the designated project list was unconstitutional. It wasn't that the federal government did too much for climate or too much for the environment. They did so little, but they were aided by overreaction from conservative benches. So I want to plead with my liberal colleague. This bill, let's be honest about it, it sets up a secretariat that says it might talk about doing something for sustainable jobs. It doesn't actually help workers. It doesn't do what was promised in numerous liberal po political platforms. And I, I lament that. But if we oversell on each side of the House, citizens of Canada are left disappointed and without a climate plan. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, uh, Madam Speaker, I would uh, I have a lot of respect for the leader of the Green Party. Having said that, I disagree uh, with her conclusions. At the end of the day, this legislation, uh, when it passes, will ultimately put into place and assist the government, uh, whatever political stripe it might be, to be able to be in a better position, to be able to not only transition, but generate and create the opportunities in a coordinated fashion for uh, future renewable uh, uh, energy uh, jobs. And there is absolutely no, uh, no denying of that. And when you do the consultations and you have an effective uh, advisory committee that brings the evidence uh, to the minister, the minister is better able to make the decisions that ultimately will provide the types of policy that are necessary in order to have a positive impact. When you think in terms of the environment, you need to take a look at it from a 30,000-foot uh, uh, level or a holistic approach where you incorporate legislation such as this, uh, the net zero legislation, you can talk about budgetary uh, uh, measures or other policy statements uh, regarding single-use plastics, trees, all sorts of initiatives. And I think if you compare what it is that we've been able to, to put together, Madam Speaker, it speaks volumes in terms of future uh, jobs, uh, future healthier environment, and a stronger uh, leadership role for Canada to play in the, in the world in dealing uh, with the climate crisis. Crisis that we have. Questions and comments, the Honourable Member for Battle River Cross.